What's going on everyone? This is another Chris Course with your host Chris and in this episode we are going to be covering the Commons Chunk plugin. So what is this plugin and what does it do? Well, the Commons Chunk plugin starts off by analyzing all of our entry points, so the files we actually write code in. It'll analyze these entry points and it'll look for any shared modules between them. And if it finds any shared modules, it'll take those shared modules and place them within their own separate file. Now this is good for speed and cacheability purposes because we can load this shared module file once on our home page when needed, and then if we need it on one of our other pages, it can be about, contact, or anything else, it'll be loaded from cache rather than requiring us to load all of that code again from the server. So let's get started and I'll show you guys how to implement this from scratch. So as I mentioned, we are going to be covering the Commons Chunk plugin. Now, if you'd like to follow along, it should be noted that I do have a gate variable in the description and it'll put you exactly where I am right now in the video. So if we go ahead and look at our webpack config file, you're going to see that we have multiple entry points. So we have one for our home page, we have one for our about page, and we have one for our contact page. And each of these entry points is being bundled into its own separate bundle. This way we can ensure that we're only loading the exact scripts we need whenever we visit something such as our home page, our contact page, or our about page. Now if I look within home.js, you can see that I have a script specifically for the home page. Contact.js, I have a script specifically for the contact page. And within about.js, I have a script specifically for the about page, just so we can tell which page we're on when we're looking in the console. So to continue on, it should be noted that within package.json, we have two dependencies, one for Webpack 2.2, which just came out a few days ago. So now if you type in npm install Webpack, you're going to get version 2.2. Finally, version 2 came out, which is really awesome. Provides some really cool features, which we'll cover in future videos. Second, we have jQuery, which we're going to use to illustrate how the Commons Chunk plugin works. So right now, if you look in my directory, I do have these already installed. So if you're following along with this video, you're going to want to install them with either npm install and run that, or you're going to want to run yarn. And yarn will automatically run the install process. You can see I already have them installed. So if you wish to install these, go ahead and do it now, pause the video, and we'll continue from there. So let's say I'm going about my day-to-day -day development and within home.js, I want to make use of jQuery. So I'm not making use of Babel or anything, so it's not really safe for me to use constant or let, so I'm just going to stay safe with var, and I'm going to import the dollar sign from the jQuery module, just like that. Now, with this in place, I can run Webpack, and everything should compile as expected, and there it goes. So if we look at our bundle sizes, you'll see that home.bundle.js is significantly larger than about.js and contact.js, because specifically because we're loading jQuery into it. Now let's say that I want to make use of jQuery within our contact page. Well, I'll just go ahead and paste that in there. And let's say down the line, I want to make use of jQuery within our about page. I'll just go ahead and paste that in there as well. So you can see that contact.js has significantly increased to 277 kilobytes and about.js has also increased to 277 kilobytes. Now, what this means is when we visit our home page and refresh the page, we're loading that 277 kilobytes whenever we visit it. And if I were to visit our about page, you'll see that we're also loading 270 kilobytes when we visit this one as well. So it's not really efficient because we're loading jQuery multiple times, and it would make more sense that if we could get jQuery out of these bundles and within its own separate file so that we're only loading it once, it gets stored in cache, so that when we visit our home page once, it's stored in cache, which means we do download it from the server, but when we visit our about page, it gets loaded from cache. So we're going to save a lot of server latency and really optimize our site in the long run by using this method. And we can do so by using the Commons Chunk plugin. So let's go ahead and implement this now. As I mentioned, the Commons Chunk plugin comes with Webpack by default, so we need to do a few things to get it up and running. First thing we're going to do is add a plugins property, and this is going to be equal to an array. And within this, we are going to create a new object. And this object is going to be a new Webpack Webpack, Webpack, okay, we got it. A new webpack dot optimize dot commons chunk plugin. And this is going to be a function, a method to be exact. So we can save that. And if we recompile webpack, you're going to see that we get an error. And this error is saying webpack is not defined. 
Well, if we want to make use of this plugin, we need to first import a Webpack object. So to import a Webpack object, we're going to go to the top of our Webpack config file, and we're going to create a variable, and this variable is going to be called Webpack. And we are going to set this variable equal to require Webpack. And we're able to do this because we have Webpack downloaded as one of our dev dependencies. And actually, since this is being run on Node side of things, we can actually change this var to a constant because we're not actually compiling this file into something the browser can understand. So the constant is OK specifically for the webpack.config.js file. So now if we try running Webpack, let's see what we get. OK, so you're going to see we have another error. And this is because we do not have a valid chunk name argument. So you're going to see that it says invalid chunk names argument, but all we need to pass through here is a string. And the string is going to be the name of the external bundle that we want jQuery loaded into. So we're going to call this a vendors bundle. And then we're going to try to run Webpack again. So as you can see, this time we have four files being compiled instead of one. And the newest addition being vendors. So if we look within distribution, and you'll see that I actually made a mistake here. We don't want to just call this vendors because a vendors file isn't actually a JavaScript. We want to make sure that we're specifying that this is a JavaScript file. So we're going to add a .js to the end of this. And let's run Webpack one more time. And there we go. OK, so we can get rid of this vendors file that we accidentally created. I'm just going to delete it like that. And now we have four files. And if we look at the sizes for these files, you're going to notice that about contact and home, they have all decreased significantly because we're only storing jQuery within one specific file, that file being vendors.js. So in order to have this work, if we go ahead and refresh our about page, you're going to notice that we're getting an error that says webpack jsonp is not defined. And this is because we actually haven't imported vendors.js into our about.html file. So we are going to be making two requests to the server instead of one, but the benefit in size is a trade-off that you're going to want to take. So let's go ahead and get rid of this, and then we're going to add vendors.js. So we're making two requests to the server so that we can ensure that vendors.js is being loaded from cache rather than being loaded multiple times across about contact and home. So you'll see we're making two requests. And now we're going to want to make sure that we're also loading vendors.js into our contact file. And within our index.html file. So now when we go to our separate pages, home page, it's going to be loading, loaded from memory cache automatically for us. Takes zero seconds. Much quicker overall for you to load your files this way rather than loading them separately within their own specific bundle. So let's cover a little bit more of this plugin. It should be noted that you're going to need modules to be shared. I believe it is across three separate files in order for the commons chunk plugin to take effect. So we can go ahead and test this. Let's go ahead and remove jQuery from our contact page. And OK, so this is correct. You will need across three separate files. You can see that, OK, contact.js doesn't actually have jQuery being loaded into it. It's only 124 bytes. But about and home.js do have jQuery being loaded into it because it's 276 bytes. And vendors.js is 3.58 bytes, which means jQuery is not loaded into that. So you need to make sure that the bundle is being shared across three separate files in order for it to be loaded in its own separate vendor bundle. And there are options for this. If you would like it to be two, four, five, or six, you just will need to look into the Webpack configuration, or excuse me, the Webpack documentation in order to see which option you should pass through the plugin in order to ensure that effect takes place. So I would recommend sticking with the default. Um, it provides a happy medium between sizes of your vendors.js file and sizes of your actual bundles. And that's all for this one, folks. I hope you enjoyed. This is a really cool plugin that really helps optimize your code. It's super easy to implement, and I really hope you guys use it within your projects. Otherwise, I hope you guys enjoy the tutorial, and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next episode. Later. Thank you.